Hello violinists, welcome to Prime Strings. I'm Henriette and today we are learning Carry and Crow from the Fiddle Time Joggers book. I'll play it for you first. A lovely tune this and you have perhaps heard that in this tune you are going to make big differences between your loud playing and your quiet playing. If you have a look underneath the first note it says forte there and forte as we know means loud so you're going to play the first line loud but then when you repeat it there's a repeat at the end of line one when you repeat it you play it quietly. Now we know how to make the distinction between loud and soft. Loud, as we know, you use longer bows, you come closer to the bridge and you play with, with more bow weight into the string. Whereas quiet playing requires the exact opposite. Make your bow stroke shorter, drift away from the bridge towards the fingerboard a little bit with your bow and be very light on the bow as well. So the first line the first time and the second time are very different in terms of dynamics. Dynamics is the overarching term of all the lags and softs combined in your piece. The second line begins loud and then changes to soft playing and the third line is mezzo forte and mezzo forte means medium loud and at the end you go a little bit quieter and you also slow it down somewhat. So let's now take this one step slower so we can explore the notes and then I want you to try and add some dynamics straight away if you possibly can. So we're going from the beginning and we're playing this with a repeat, the top part of course. So we're starting with long bows. I'll count us in for four. One, two, three, four. Well done if you kept that going all the way, that's really smart playing there. Now, there are a few moments where we just need to discuss one or two things to make your playing even better. Take a look at the last bar of the first line. The last bar starts on an up bow, and this minim here is an up bow. Now, if we're going to go softer after this, uh, because we are going to repeat it quietly, you don't want to play this E all the way to the heel of the bow because that sets you up for playing a long bow here and then you're going to be too loud, you see. So on this last E, I'm going to use only half a bow. Okay, and that sets me up much more beautifully ready to play the repeat softly. You see 
how I play this at the upper upper section of the bow, not even half the bow I would say because I'm going a little bit quieter than that. So the transition needs to be made on the last note before the repeat, not when you're already starting the repeat you see. So let's practice that, let's go from the beginning and we're going very loud, just bear in mind now to play that last E up to the middle instead of using the whole bow. One, two, three, four. has got a very short bow, can you see? This time we're using the whole bow. There we go. So you have noticed, I hope, that the last E, the last note of line one, is first a half bow, and when I repeat it, Afterwards, of course, I'm going to play forte again. So when I repeat it, I am using the whole bow. So it sets me up correctly for the second line. Now, that requires a little bit of thinking, and that's what we do in our practice. You, learn, you will learn to sight read it. So on your first go, you'll learn to read those things. But maybe we'll leave that to a later stage in your playing, shall we? Let's now play the second line and practice suddenly going softly in the middle of this line. So we're starting on long bows. One, the second line this is. One, two, three, four. it's much easier to suddenly go quieter because you're already at the point and you can decide how much bow this is going to have. Now this time when we play it I want you to do the same thing, suddenly quiet, but now as soon as you hit the piano section move your bow away from the bridge a little bit further. From line two, bar five, three, four. the last line will give us any problems at all. So let's now go back to the beginning and let's join it all up. We'll play it with the repeat and with all the louds and softs. One, two, three, four. also that on the last two notes I played a fourth finger. That makes my playing a little bit softer in style, a little bit more mellow and, and I think it suits the ritenuto and diminuendo really nicely. Now let's have a look now at the lower part. Will you play it with me straight away? 
One, two, three, four. So I'm hoping when you were playing this second part you have noticed very similar dynamics to when we were playing the first part. So suddenly loud, suddenly quiet are one of the things that you want to add to your music when you play this here. I'm hoping you've also noticed where we put one finger on two strings. And I want you to practice that now with me and we're going to go and have a look at bar six. The lower part of bar six, you have a first finger on the E string followed by a first finger on the A string. So I'm placing my finger in between those two strings and then I'll hit them both, look. We've done this before a couple of times, so let's see if you can do it again. Uh, last note of the second line and I'm talking still about the lower part the last note of the second line is a B and the first note of the third line is an E it's also a first finger so here we have got a first finger on A followed by a first finger on D so let's also practice putting our finger on two strings there works for you that's great if it doesn't quite work for you try to reset the angle of your finger in a slightly different way and if it still doesn't work let's try a different ang angle yet again shall we and every violinist has a slightly different way of how to play this because that depends on how thick your fingertips are and it also depends on how wide apart your strings are set. So I can't give you a hard and fast rule about how to do it. So you have to just find out your own way by just altering the angle a little bit and you can let your elbow help you sort out the angle perhaps. Now take a look at the, at the middle of the second bar of the third line. So that is bar 10. I'm looking at the lower part still. In the middle of bar 10, again, you have a first finger on the A string, followed by a first finger on the D string. So we're going to have to think about putting our fingers, putting our finger on two strings, right at the beginning of the bar. Bar 10, lower part, goes. So as soon as I put my first finger on the A string, it goes already on the D string as well. So after the A, you need to put it on two strings. Shall we try that once more? Super clever. Now let's play the second part again from the beginning. And we're going to try and remember as many things as possible uh, in the way of louds and softs and in a way of putting your finger down on two strings. One, two, three, four.
violin playing is all about and multitasking is something that violinists do all the time. Now, for some people that is quite straightforward to do, for others that was a whole lot more challenging. So um, that is very challenging for me, so if you are with me and you find this quite tricky as well, that's okay. As you progress, you learn to divide your attention between many different things, so don't worry if, if you find that very challenging at this stage. What you want to do though is not play too fast because these things are much easier if you play more slowly. So this piece was a duet after all so let's put the two things together now. We'll do it as we've done in the past with duets. We'll play it twice over. The first time I would like you to fill in the top part and now she'll play the lower part. Uh, and then we'll swap the parts around on our second go. So we're going to play with the repeat. You play the top part first. I'll count us in for four. So I won't be playing with you. I shall be adding your accompaniment to it. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. If you made it this time, that's super clever, well done. If you didn't quite make it this time, that's okay. You can try it again and again and again. You can play this video back as many times as you want to, of course. This time, let's swap the parts. You are going to play the lower part and I shall play the top part. And again, we'll play it with the repeat. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Awesome. Well done. Now for an end of the lesson, we're just going to uh, revise our note names, our letter names of our notes. And today we're going to have a look at the second line. And we're picking the top part of the second line. Uh, have a look and think what these notes might be called. I'll give you a moment and then I'll give you the answer. So I'm hoping that you would be ahead of me so you can check your answer when I say mine. Okay. So we're starting on a G sharp. The next note is called A, then comes B, B, then 
A, F sharp, F sharp, G sharp, E, G sharp, A, B, B, A, G sharp, G sharp, F sharp. Wow, it's awesome. If you can learn a little bit of music theory alongside these lessons, that's how you're going to progress and build up a complete picture of all the techniques that there are to learn when you learn the violin. So well done. You've had a great lesson today. I'm hoping you have enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, do please use the comments section below this video. If you have enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and feel free to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so and i very much look forward to seeing you again soon in flying high goodbye